Now I just want to walk you through this um, package for a large pond. Um, walk you through the components of the filtration. Um, let's say that you've got a 5,000 litre pond with um, koi or fish in it. This would be perfect. Um, if you weren't going to have a high stock of fish, this sort of system can easily filter like a 20,000 litre pond. Um, I try to over filter it as much as possible. So for a package like this on a 5,000 litre pond, that'd be perfect. Now, it all starts on the inlet. Um, if we put a massive pre-filter sponge like this, it's ideal. That way we stop a lot of the gunk going into the filter itself because it's very easy to service a large pre-filter sponge. And I'll usually try and put that in, a, um, in an area where it's gonna pick up quite high in the pond. I don't want it down where all the leaves are gonna cover it up. I want it somewhere that's gonna be very easy just to slide that off, give it a clean and put it back on again. Um, not appropriate for all aquariums, since some ponds, sorry, you should be using like a dirty run pump or something that um, you're not gonna be able to see. There's also various universal rocks you can put over the top to cover it, but that does defeat the purpose if it means you're not gonna clean it. Um, if that was cleaned a couple of times a month, a month, it would be perfect. Now, that's then gonna suck from there and go into a pump. Now, you take off the little pre-filter on the pump, and then you'll be able to put some pipe from the outlet of the pre-filter sponge into the pump. The pump is then going to shoot the water to the filter, and it's got a little double outlet, so you can just turn it and either run a fountain for some aeration, or pop the fountain off, and you can just have the water shooting up and agitating the surface, and then some of the water can shoot out. Um, then shooting out from there, it shoots into a UV steriliser, I want the water to run through the UV steriliser. The, the bigger the UV steriliser, the better. Try and make sure it's over 18 watts, that way it's got some chance of killing parasites, but it's gonna kill all of the algae spores and help to keep the water nice and clear. Then from the UV steriliser, it's then gonna go into the biological filter. Um, it's very important that in a new system, you don't run the UV all the time. So in a new system, you might turn the UV on for a week, off for a week, or on for a day, off for a day, whatever so the bacteria has a chance to get into the system um, because the UV is going to kill the bacteria. Also make sure that you, every few um, um, months, say every quarter, pull the UV apart and clean the quart sleeve because it gets this black sort of stuff on it that reduces its effectiveness and make sure that you replace the globe every year or so. Then the water comes down, um, goes, connects up to the top of the, um, the filter so there's a little connection up here where you connect it in. The filter can also run in the pond if you need it to. So that is an option to run it internally. Then the water gets sucked down through the um, brushes. Then, uh, then past your sort of jet mat. Then past your bio balls. And I find it really effective to line the bottom of the filter with marine pure. So marine pure basically is lay down first and the bio balls on top. And the marine peel basically helps to offer denitrification and just reduce the amount of nitrate in the pond and massively increase your um, surface area for bacteria because that's a very advanced media, more advanced than used in most ponds. Then the other thing is water flow. So the filter itself is for the filtration, but that doesn't mean it's going to provide enough water flow. It's actually not going to provide enough water flow. And what we want is actually plenty of water flow and plenty of oxygen because the more oxygen there is in the water, the better the bacteria is able to work and therefore the more effectively the, the filter is actually going to work because it will raise your redox so your bacteria is going to work faster. So what I'm going to do is get one of these big bad boys, very energy efficient, and um, I'm going to put that in the pond just to create water circulation. So that's going to run at 20,000 litres an hour and my whole purpose for that one is to put it in the pond on an angle so then the water's actually going to be moving around in the pond because so often you'll see a very large pond like a 5,000 litre pond the water is sending and receiving from the same end so therefore the end, other end is pretty much stagnant I am really a fan of making sure there's plenty of kinetic energy in the pond which means I'm going to blow this massive pump and turn the water so even though it's 5,000 litres an hour I'm going to make sure there's very good water flow and I'm going to adjust this on an angle so the surface is well agitated. So it's going to be very good surface agitation, very good water flow. That way um, um, I'm going to have good oxygen levels 
and my filtration is going to be effective because once again you can have very good filtration and not have good water flow and surface agitation and aeration therefore you'll end up with low redox therefore your filters will actually not be that effective because the water that's coming out of a filter is essentially in oxygen deficit because the bacteria that grows in the filter actually breaks all, sucks all the oxygen out of the water um, so it's important to remember that your aeration and your filtration are separate it's really important so the next thing I'm going to do is also going to add um, plenty of water ager because when we fill the pond up we're going to want to take the chlorine and so forth out of the water I'm also going to be using uh, some pond salt because salt dramatically increases the immune system of the fish I'm also going to be using a carbonate hardness powder because it's really important to increase the carbonate hardness in, in the water which really really affects the um, the health of the fish and stabilization of the pH and stuff and then I'm also going to make sure that the fish are fed on a high quality food because even fish like koi the higher the quality food you feed the less waste the fish produce and then therefore the cleaner the pond will stay and it really does make a dramatic effect so you pay more for the food but the pond stays cleaner and the fish stay healthier so anyway um, I might take another video once all this stuff's installed in the pond